for watching Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Athea Americana. Nah, Mark and Seymour. What about a Prunka Alavesha? I've just never seen one associate with an honest platyringus before. What kind of bird has teeth? Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Greg, Joe, and Holly back with you here in Cincinnati on a night filled with rain. It's 41 degrees. Feels like it's in the high 30s. Cincinnati trying to get a big boost up in the playoff rankings and maybe even more than just a little bit of a move here. After a week of incredible criticism over the college football playoff rankings that were released and had Cincinnati at number nine, today's all about what's on the field. Let's show you what happened on the field earlier. Greg, ACC title game rematch. Clemson trying to make it their sixth straight to the college football playoffs, and they got the best of Notre Dame, didn't they? They did, and it was such an impressive showing from Trevor Lawrence. An early interception, he finds Amari Rogers on the post there. Just a beautiful throw under duress, but it was really also about getting the run game going. First time around, ETN bottled up by that Notre Dame defense. Not the case today. He had 10 carries for 124 yards. Tess, that's, a, that's 12 yards a carry. It's pretty good. And then he wasn't alone. Trevor Lawrence showing that he's not the only guy in the backfield ETN is that can take it the distance. You see the big six foot six signal caller showing off his wheels as he put the Notre Dame Irish on ice. And then five win Ohio State got behind early to upset minded Northwestern in the Big Ten title game. And Justin Fields was not good, had only 114 yards passing and a couple picks. But don't worry, Justin Trey Sermon is there to save the day. 29 carries for 331 yards and two rushing touchdowns against what was a very good Northwestern defense. Ohio State punched their ticket, but it was not pretty. All right, so now that's 6-0 Ohio State. So, Greg, where does that leave us? Assuming an Alabama win tonight and a Cincy win here, where does that have us? I think Cincy has to absolutely dominate tonight to make themselves a part of the conversation. But right now, given the fact that Notre Dame beat Clemson earlier, I still think they occupy the four spot. And if Pulso wins, the conversation doesn't center around whether or not Cincinnati gets in the playoff. It's whether or not Tulsa gets into the New Year's Six. And I think in that particular case, since he would likely free fall below that of Coastal Carolina, who would secure the group of five New Year's Six bid. And here they come. And we are moments away to see if they can go undefeated to be crowned a champion. Last year they lost in this title game. Coach Fickle told us how hungry they are to simply play. COVID cancellations. It's been a month since this team has played. And then there's Tulsa, the comeback kids. They have faced double-digit deficits seemingly all year long. Can they conquer the biggest mountain to climb in this conference? Winning here at Cincinnati since he's won 19 straight home games. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. Kickoff is coming up next. And now a look inside Nissan's Heisman house. So, uh... Looking forward to this season? Yep. Been working on my anticipation. Gotta stay one step ahead. Anticipation is key. So are you Doing life in the house? Always. It's yeah, my family's doing good. Thanks for asking. Who? I think it was Aristotle. Or maybe my high school coach. You should probably get that. It's your mom. Hello? Hi, hi. Hey, Mrs. Tebow. Chicken and waffle sounds great. Nice talking to you too, Mrs. T. What? Yes. I, yes. But don't dude, even think about asking me that. Something to believe. ESPN, home of the college football playoff, coming New Year's Day. The American Athletic Conference Championship on ABC presented by Capital One, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Glad you're with us as you're watching the American Conference on ESPN. First time Tulsa's ever played for the American Conference Championship. A lot of credit goes to their head coach, Philip Montgomery. He joins Holly. Coach, your team has been impacted with disruptions and postponements all season long. What does it mean to your group to be playing for a championship tonight? 
means everything. I mean, these kids have, have been so resilient. They stay focused through all the topsy-turvy of the schedule, things being canceled, things being postponed. They've done things right all the way through. And uh, to be in this situation tonight, they're just excited to be on the field and ready to play. The conditions are not ideal. How do you overcome this rain for your offense to operate at the tempo you'd like to go? We've been fighting conditions all year. This ain't going to stop us now. So whatever it's going to bring, let it bring. Let's play ball. Amen, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. I love that response. Let's play ball for a championship. Tulsa won the toss, and they elected to defer. Trey Tucker had a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against USF. As Zach Long gets the night started. And here is Tucker for Cincinnati. And it's a good return. Just tripped up was Tucker. Desmond Ritter, 34th start of his college football career. 29 wins framed against only four losses. And he has done such a great job here in the second half of this season. Always been a terrific athlete, but having a great understanding and feel from the pocket and also being very accurate, finding some of those capable weapons that he has on the perimeter, both at tight end and at wide receiver. Winning his quarterback in Cincinnati history. Ritter batted away right in his face was Christian Williams. The senior Nickelback Williams, a kid who they thought his football career was going to be over a few years ago when he was diagnosed with a cyst in his spinal column. And a good job by him attacking and just hanging in the air as long as he can to get a hand on the football. This Tulsa defense does a great job taking away what you do well. They're built from the inside out with an excellent nose guard and one of the best linebackers in the country. Here's Dokes, and Dokes is stacked up. That strong front of Tulsa with Stevenson and Zaven Collins. Chick-fil-A impact players. There are some good ones, that's for sure. You look at Wiley, the tight end. He is their go-to guy in the passing game. And Dokes, a very powerful runner. The aforementioned Zaven Collins, maybe the best linebacker in America. And Allie Green, they're not afraid to put him on an island. He'll likely be matched up against Wiley a time or two throughout the course of this game. Third and nine. Ritter gets it out quickly in cutting road and trying to get extra yardage was young, but he's going to be about a yard and a half short of that line to gain. Decision early here. Luke Fickle looks as though he's going to play it conservatively, understandably so, on his side of the 50. A nice job there by Tulsa, understanding the line to gain, rallying up to Michael Young and not allowing any yards after catch to force the three and out. James Smith on to punt. He was just invited to the Senior Bowl yesterday. Number one ranked pure punter on Mel Kuyper's newly released NFL draft positional rankings on ESPN.com. And the fair catch at around the 15-yard line. That defense does their job for Tulsa on the opening drive. And now Zach Smith will come out. The senior, the transfer from Baylor. This is his second full season as Tulsa's starting quarterback. And he has a big arm, very strong in the pocket as well. Good runner, but he is a little streaky. And he is a guy that has battled some issues from a consistency standpoint. He's going up against an outstanding Cincinnati defense. So he's going to have to be at his best. Because you know Cincinnati and that defense, they're thinking, hey, we got to make the quarterback beat us. And if Zach Smith can, so be it. But the senior has a lot of football experience, should play well tonight. Empty set on the first play. Smith, he's going to go downfield against the Bearcats defense. And he couldn't connect with Cannon Montgomery, coach's son. Let's go down to Holly. Well, guys, you talked about the good secondary of Cincinnati, and they're getting a huge lift tonight. They fought their safety, James Wiggins, who's by far their best safety, would not be able to play, but he's gone through warm-ups and he is starting. Number one is out there, despite what they're calling some type of a stress fracture or stress reaction in his leg. Something to keep an eye on. He's outstanding there at strong safety, but they have three safeties. Both Hicks and Forrest can go as well. Here's Taylor now, and a good run for a first down for Corey Taylor. And he's been banged up with nagging injuries in his career. This year dealing with a foot injury 
as well. Over 1,800 career rushing yards for Taylor, and a good one there. Tulsa wants to run the football. They have a really big offensive line. They want to lean on that defensive line for Cincinnati. Low snap. Smith has to get it off the ground. And a little bit of pressure, but gets the completion at J.C. Santana. Ball comes out at the end, and Sleep Stokes jumps on it. First down, Tulsa. 18-yard gain there. Beautiful movement in the pocket there from Zach Smith. Slid just a little bit to the left, bought just the tiniest bit of time, and threw a strike across the middle. Good start from the Tulsa quarterback. Taylor this time nowhere to go. He was wrapped up right away. Ethan Tucky was the first to get in on him. I really like Ethan Tucky. He's a versatile defender. They'll line him up at the end of the line of scrimmage as well. And you go back to that throw. Look at the movement there. Pocket not clean, but Zach Smith, the senior quarterback, unaffected. Stayed very poised, kept that passing posture. And threw an accurate strike for the first down. Look at the rain coming down here for this championship game. Three-man rush on second and 11. Quickly to the outside and taken down right away was Santana. And as he had Kobe Bryant right on him. Kobe Bryant, defensive back who coaches will tell you, first in the building every single day. Hard worker. It's an excellent secondary. Kobe Bryant. Mod Garner, the aforementioned Wiggins, and like I said, Hicks and Forrest. It's a group that will play on a lot of islands. They love man coverage, and Tulsa's going to have to beat it. So they'll go to some stacks and bunches, which they're going to have right here at the top of your screen. Man coverage across the board. Third down and seven. That's the top-rated defense in the American Conference. Smith. To midfield and fighting for extra yardage is J.J. Josh Johnson, another Tulsa first down. Now, Greg, the wrap on Tulsa is that this offense gets off to slow starts. They have scored just a total of 12 first quarter points on the season. Smith intercepted. intercepted. Jarrell White comes up with the pick. Who's looking good for Zach Smith early, very in control. But if you slip up against Cincinnati, they will make you pay interception for the Bearcats. Just a great job on the interception and being disciplined. They tried to fake a little tunnel screen, and they tried to go with this, but they weren't fooled defensively as Gerald White Eyes were in the backfield the entire time. He read right out underneath Stokes, who they were trying to hit, and a great job of reading the quarterback's eyes, and boom! Did that just hit the rim? Did that go in? <laughs> he might have missed that, but either way, it's a heck of a play by White. A lot of confusion here up front. Greg, you know, you see Cincinnati with a three and out to start the game. And then you see something like this, and you wonder about the layoff, the month without playing football. It affects every team a little differently. Snap infraction. Offense number 56. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. So how much early on does Luke Fickle concern himself with shaking off the rust? You have to be concerned and acknowledge it, and you got to just make sure you settle your guys down. It's a championship environment. He said it in the open. He said, hey, look, i got to control the emotions of my guys. It's not easy to do. Haven't played team. since November 21st. They have played a lot of football, and they've played in this American Championship game before. So you know they'll be OK. Just got to knock the rust off. First and 15 after the penalty. Doak's going to test that left side, and he is tripped up by Ali Green. Ali Green, senior defensive back. He goes 6'3", 206. They have length. They have size in the defensive backfield as Tulsa. Both these teams do. And Tulsa, I mean, two corners, both over six foot two. You don't see that often at the power five level. Every coach is trying to find length at corner. That's that and pass rushers defensively. Those are the two things you love to find. And Tulsa has two excellent corners in Evans and Green. Second and 14. Ritter, plenty of time, downfield, near side. What an effort 
on the sideline by Alec Pierce. Their big play guy who stretches that Tulsa defense and then comes up with that. What a catch. Ty Neal Martin in pretty good spot, but back shoulder throw and Pierce does his best. Odell Beckham turning off of it, securing it with his left hand. Just amazing concentration. He missed major time this year. And they are happy to have him back. And coming up big there, 31 yards. And now quick to the outside to Jackson. Deshaun Jackson with a six yard catch. He leads the team in receiving yards. And four, big hole for Jerome Ford, and here goes Ford splitting defenders and taking it in with ease. 42-yard touchdown run for Jerome Ford. Transfer from Alabama, got a waiver to play. Gives him a good one-two punch with the big dokes. And you saw that burst when he had the opening. And he goes 42 yards, his seventh rushing touchdown of the season. Well, I guess they shook off the rust, didn't they? Well, an interception leads to this incredible catch by Pierce. And then Ford in the open field, splitting defenders and finding pay dirt gives the Bearcats the lead. The American Athletic Championship on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? list of the oldest stadiums in college football. You factor in all football, Nipper to six, third in major college football. But here's something, here we are playing on this date. You got the latest date a game is played in Nippert Stadium history. Previous to this, they played December 7th of 1918. Numbers that matter right now are seven zip, Cincinnati on top. Or is it the number nine? That'll soon be going away. That ranking next to their name. Let's go to the studio and Kevin. Whole lot of offensive talent over there in that SEC championship game. A game that probably will throw the biggest punch in determining the Heisman Trophy this year. It's a conversation we will get into. But right now, all eyes are on Cincinnati and Tulsa to see if Cincinnati can impress enough to make a huge surge. We mentioned Tulsa's slow starts to the season. As Taylor's going to take it off the left side and a run of about eight and a half yards by Corey Taylor. So to a certain extent, I suppose Tulsa's got them right where they want them. <laughs> They're down early because that's what this Tulsa team has done is they've come back they all might, season long. They might, need to want, they might want to give up another touchdown. That's right. They're real comfortable, two scores down, but it's pretty remarkable how this team fights. Taylor again as he plows ahead for a first down. Remember the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchup, the Rose Bowl, the All-State Sugar Bowl. That is coming your way tomorrow. Reese and the guys will have the big reveal, the final top 25 rankings, a four-hour special. It starts at noon Eastern after Sunday NFL countdown on ESPN. You have a busy day of work tomorrow, don't you? <laughs> I'm excited. My favorite day of the year. 
Corey Taylor nowhere to go this time. Malik Van with the tackle for a loss. As he says, no, 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 sir. This Tulsa team is going to have to be really good on first and second down running the football. This is a Cincinnati group that likes to apply pressure, that makes life really difficult. Some of their pressure packages, and of course they have an excellent pass rusher in MyJ Sanders. So going to be really important for Tulsa to be good on regular down and distance, and they haven't done a great job of that so far. That is Chris Paul starting right tackle. Second team all-conference player. And he's really their most versatile offensive lineman. Holly? Well, I will check on him, of course, but I wanted to tell you this has been one of the best atmospheres I've been in so far. This fan base has come out in this pouring rainstorm. Cincinnati actually had to apply for an attendance variance from the government and for the Center for Disease Control. Um, I, a local reporter actually asked the governor why wasn't it extended, and the governor said, I'm going to check on that. So credit to the governor. They got it organized, and they have the same variance that the Cleveland Browns and Cincinnati Bengals have. 17.9% of the stadium, and I have to applaud these fans. This is a brutal night right now in Cincinnati. And look at all these people. It is adding so much juice and energy down here on the field. Uh, nice moment, of course, for the families of these players to be able to see them play. After that loss of two, second and 12 here. Zach Smith looks over. Six and one team, lone loss was opening week against Oklahoma State, a team they played so tough. Smith, pressure coming on him as he tried to connect on the shallow cross to Prince, but it's incomplete. You know, we mentioned that Oklahoma State team. You know, Zach Smith himself and many on this team were COVID quarantined and did not return to play until the Tuesday before that season opener against Oklahoma State. That certainly would have a Massive impact on your ability to be competitive, but they certainly were, that's for sure. Quick injury timeout, and we'll be right back. That's Van Down. AT&T 5G Skycam. Check out the AT&T 5G Skycast on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. The Skycam getting a little wet tonight here in Cincinnati. Only 40 degrees, a rainy night, a third and 13 for Tulsa, Greg. And with Cincinnati, they play a lot of man coverage. And in order to kind of make life difficult on that man defense, you get to these bunches right here down to the bottom. Smith, a good strike for a first down as he goes to J.C. Santana. Good job there by J.C. Santana going down and securing that. It was really close. Ball was nose down coming out of Zach Smith's hands, but I believe the junior wide receiver, the speedster, got underneath it. Smith four of seven for 43 yards to start his evening. Corey Taylor, and Taylor driven back, and getting in the mix again is the cornerback, Ahmad Gardner. He is always active here at line stretch. With how they structure their defense, they have three defensive linemen, and they have their two linebackers that are lined up inside of those defensive ends, which requires both safeties and corners to be very involved in the run game. Most of those corners don't like that contact, Joe. Gardner's all about it. Go in there and fill when he gets a chance. Second and eight, quick strike to the outside. Flag is down as he goes to Josh Johnson. Prior to the snap, full start. Offense number five. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. That was Santana, the wideout. Six year for Philip Montgomery. It's a team that playing in a I'm listen a tough conference. People thought they were going to finish ninth. He went out and did this. He says we're a resilient bunch. Yeah, we had our issues with COVID. Everybody was fighting through it. And he talks about this league all the time, the level of experience that he has from his days in the Big 12. And he said, I'm telling you, it's extremely close to what he would see week in and week out. Second and 13. Shallow cross, incomplete. It was too far out in front of Sam Crawford and Curtis Brooks 
was coming in on Zach Smith. Tell you what, Tulsa's going to need to find some answers in their protection because right now, Cincinnati's only rushing three guys, three defensive linemen, and yet they're still able to apply some pressure to Zach Smith. That can't happen. You have five big, solid offensive linemen. You have to protect your quarterback, especially when Cincinnati's dropping in coverage. Third and 13. See if they can protect Smith here. They do give him time, and with it, incomplete as he was looking for Johnson. Holly, we did see the right tackle for Tulsa go down moments ago. What can you tell us? He is still out right now as they examine the top of his right foot. Chris Paul is an experienced 331-pound tackle. In his place, they've got a true freshman, Jaden Muskrat, took over for him, a 280-pound true freshman right out of high school. So that is a significant difference at right tackle, that protection you're talking about, Greg. Lachlan Wilson went from playing Australian Rules football for Heldeberg Football Club to punting here in Cincinnati. Looking to pin inside the 10, and it just checks up but inside the end zone. Well, the big story, of course, when it comes to this conference and when it comes nationally to the reaction we saw with the college football playoff rankings was where Cincinnati was as they dropped down without playing to number nine. The commissioner, Mike Oresco, said, I never thought I'd say this, but bring back the BCS. Bring back the BCS, he says, Greg McElroy. He says, this is the seventh year of the college football playoff, and it does appear the deck is stacked against us and against the other group of five teams. He's completely right. Committee's rankings on Tuesday, difficult time agreeing with that. Ritter pulls it, keeps it, and then slides down. Well, things changed this afternoon, though, because we didn't have a game, a competitive game in the ACC. Notre Dame got blasted right. by Clemson, so there are some out there saying, we'll see what Cincinnati does tonight. Well, it's wrong, though. If we see a Florida team lose as a 23-and-a-half point favorite to LSU. They drop one spot. Cincinnati, they haven't played, and yet they've been penalized and have dropped three spots over the last few weeks, and it really is unjustifiable because the Cincinnati team has dominated everybody they've played, and yet they still are not being given the credit they deserve. A lot of finger pointing as Cullen Wick came charging out on Ritter. Snap infraction, offense number 56. Five-yard penalty, remain second down. And part of the problem, and we look at the college football rankings presented by AT&T 5G, part of the problem is I feel like the committee is ranking teams not based on what they've accomplished, but based on what we think they are. Brand names. Brand names. Teams that Profile. are 6-0. and Ohio State last week at 5-0, and they hadn't done a whole lot to justify being at number four, five spots away from Cincinnati. So they're obviously in the playoff, but the five-spot gap's way too much. A good read that time by Ritter as they ran speed option. Ritter kept it. Finally was tackled by the All-America linebacker, Zabin Collins. You know, and then we see what happens today. There is Collins jogging off. And a nice job here by Ritter, and you see he's always been able to do this. Great athlete, but the throwing has been fantastic. Big collision there between him and Collins. So Ben Bryant comes in as the helmet will go back on Ritter. Bryant, the sophomore quarterback. We've seen plenty of this early on, haven't we? I want to just put one more bow on this college football playoff conversation, too, as soon as we get the call. Offside, defense number 12. Five-yard penalty remains first down. I'm, I'm perfectly okay with Ohio State being, I think they're an excellent football team, mm -hmm. even though they didn't play their best tonight. And today, against Northwestern, they got the win. When you don't play your best and you still get a win against a solid team, you deserve to be rewarded. But where I have a problem is when teams are not penalized equally. You lose two games, and you lose like your Iowa State. You lose to Louisiana. Did we forget that game occurred? I mean, the Cincinnati team has run the table. They deserve some respect. Dokes goes ahead for just a couple yards. I agree with you. It has to be equal. And winning has to matter. Game results have to matter. 
we can't just pre-position everybody based on recruiting rankings, right. brand name, tradition, and power programs. The season has to matter. Yeah, because then we'd never have situations where a Syracuse beats Clemson. We'd never have situations where a Purdue beats Ohio State by 28 points. You got to play the game. And the teams that have been out there on the field risking that every single week, no one expected LSU to beat Florida. And yet they did. Things happen in college football. And we got to pay attention to those results. Ball start. Offense number 87. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. And I brought up the fact they haven't played in a month, and we're seeing a lot of pre snap penalties. And listen, you play six games, I get it. You have the, the look of a good team. But when you play five more, when you play six more, things can happen. Yeah. Injuries happen. Attrition happens. Upsets happen. Football's a fickle game. Yeah. And I, I'm not saying Cincinnati should get in over Ohio State. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that there shouldn't be a five-spot gap between the fourth team and the ninth team. Both are undefeated, and one was out there and have played some pretty good teams as well in the American Conference. Here's Ford. Remember, he had the 42-yard touchdown run earlier. And Mike Oresco said, hey, listen, here's what I know. I know this Cincinnati team is elite. And he said, just give them a shot. We saw that sign out there in the crowd, just give us a shot, give us a chance. He said, I'm not telling you they'd beat Alabama. I don't know that there's anybody that's going to beat Alabama. But at least let's see what it looks like. Third down and three. Ritter. Looking over his options. And then quickly gets it to midfield to his big tight end, Taylor. Great job by Ritter. Moving in the pocket and keeping his eyes downfield as he challenged the line of scrimmage. I think the Tulsa defense thought he was about to run the football, try to pick it up with his legs. And outside of that left eye, that peripheral vision, he's able to find his tight end there, Leonard Taylor, for the first and 10. Could have got to him a little earlier, though. He might have had a bigger play. They go with the jet motion here. Trey Tucker trying to find a block in front. But he's run down the line that time by Martin and Williams. So far, Tulsa, for the most part, has been pretty sound. They obviously gave up the big run to Ford, but done a pretty good job tackling in space. And given the layoff that these teams have had, there have been some pre-snap penalties, but usually the first thing to go on the defensive side of the football is you can't tackle. Both these teams have been pretty physical so far at least here in the first 15 minutes. Second and nine, Ritter, play action, going to wind it up, downfield, got his man, up and getting it for a first and goal is Pierce. He has had himself a big first quarter. Alec Pierce, the big-bodied receiver, high points that for 45 yards over Allie Green. Just a great job here off play action. And you're going to see in the backfield, look at the reaction there as the safeties are eyes in the back. Dokes can't go anywhere on first and goal stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. That was Zaven Collins with the tackle. And Ritter obviously taking advantage of that one on one and giving Pierce an opportunity to go and high point the catch and make a big play. As this team goes to tempo quickly. Just really nice identifying that underneath post get grabbed by the safety and having that one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And Pierce, the big play machine, does it again to give Cincinnati life inside the five. Second and goal. So they went with the offset formation with Dokes lined up behind center there. Offense number 58. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Fourth penalty against Cincinnati. Well, the spot that you just can't have it happen, too. You're knocking on the door. Second and goal inside the four. Now, obviously, you make life a lot more difficult for your offense. Ninth play of the drive. There's big Zaven Collins, All-America linebacker. Unanimous pick as the American Conference Defensive Player of the Year.
Second and goal. Ritter being chased, and he ran out of options as Justin Wright was pursuing him, as well as Jackson Player. Excellent job there defensively. Tried to sneak their tight end, Bruno LaBelle, a guy that's mostly known for his ability to block. They tried to sneak him out in the flat. Tulsa wasn't fooled. Justin Wright doing a good job of recognizing and forcing the incompletion to set up third and long from the nine-yard line. Yeah, LaBelle's the hammer. It's Taylor and Wiley who are the great receiving options for Cincinnati. 14 seconds to go in this first quarter. Keep an eye on, on number 11. That's the guy that you want to look towards in the red zone if you get one-on-one. 6'5 -on -one. tight end Taylor. Third and goal. Ritter to the corner. And he overthrew him. Incomplete. And that's exactly who they were looking at. As you see Taylor looking up and down Christian Williams. Saying, I got you by five inches. I just need the ball. Well, you got to just give your guy a chance there. Ritter throws it out of the back of the end zone. In a perfect world, you'd love to throw it to the back pylon, let your guy run under it. But when you have a tight end with a massive length advantage, you have to just give him a chance. That time, Ritter off the mark, and it costs him. So Cole Smith comes on to attempt a 25-yard field goal. He puts it through. So an 11 play drive that had Alec Pierce with the 45 yard reception, capped by Cole Smith with the field goal. 10 0 Cincinnati. Of course, tomorrow it'll be the college football playoff selection show presented by ATT 5G. We invite you to catch Sunday NFL Countdown as well. Special start time tomorrow at 9 a.m. before the college football playoff selection show. They'll have complete coverage of Drew Brees' return to action as he faces Patrick Mahomes and Randy Moss. Of course, every week, ranking the best catches, and you got Moss. Welcome back, Drew. We're going to need 40 out of you today playing against yeah. Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Hope those ribs are feeling okay. Fascinating to see these final rankings. How the committee reacts to Notre, Notre Dame being handled today by Clemson. Here's Stokes. And Stokes out to the 28-yard line. Well, we mentioned double-digit deficits. That is where Tulsa is most comfortable. That is what they have done all year. Oh my, well, now wait nice a minute list. Here. Oh, if they knew what I knew, Joe Tess would be getting cold no. at his stocking. Boy, do I like these fans here. Back after this message and a word from our ABC stations, the nice list. Thank you, Cincy. Football, football. Ah, Bengals, ah, Steelers. Yeah, too bad they're going to ruin it with the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> Monday night, Monday night. <laughs> Monday night football right down the hill here at Nipper. It is 10 zip. Number nine team in the country, Cincinnati on top of Tulsa. Sleep Stokes takes it ahead to the 34-yard line. In that first quarter, Greg, Tulsa had two drives into Cincinnati territory, came away with no points. Cincinnati had two drives into Tulsa territory, and we got a 10-0 score. You look at Tulsa, it's just amazing how consistent they are. Consistently bad in the that's, first quarter, right. and how good they get as the game goes along. It's amazing. Taylor, and he's right at that line to gain. We'll see how that spot goes. Here's Kevin in the studio. Yeah, 
in a year in which no quarterback is shining bright. Listen, I don't care if quarterbacks <laughs> are shining bright, but we're going to tell you this, Greg, he's the best player in college football. Yeah, if the goal is to give the award to the most outstanding player in college football, Devontae Smith is the best player. I've, I mean, I, I've been saying that for weeks. I'm just glad that Booger is finally taking huh. something from all the incredible – just all the knowledge I've given him over the years. You know, he's finally grasped it. I've loved it. It's just wonderful to hear. Hop on the bandwagon book. Let's go. Second and 10. Taylor. Big hole, and he kept his balance and then gives a little more out to midfield. All right, let's talk about the Heisman just a bit. You and I have to fill out the ballot tomorrow and get that thing in. Listen, I think this is a year where you should really take a good look around. I love what Jarrett Patterson did up there in Buffalo. Yeah, he had 1,000 yards in five games. I mean, I think all, all these guys are in a weird year, deserve some consideration. Quickly to the outside, that's Crawford for a first down. Of course, I mean, Devontae Smith has been amazing, as has Kyle Trask and Mac Jones. Most people are talking about them, but you need to acknowledge what Jarrett Patterson has done in a very short season. Brees Hall is the nation's leading rusher coming into this week. And Zayvon Collins, I always try to find a defensive player that I think is worthy. That's the one. Zayvon Collins is the only guy you can consider this year, given the game-changing plays he's made throughout the course of it. Taylor, another good run against this very stout Cincinnati defense. Keep in mind, it's the number one rushing defense in the American Conference. They only give up 112 yards on the ground per game. That is not a good sign. Jarrell White is down for Cincinnati. Remember, he had the interception in the first quarter. We'll take a quick break as the medical team sees him. How about the first quarter action that we had? It was a good start for Tulsa, but it ended with an interception. And how about Pierce, the one-handed catch, led to the outstanding run by Ford. Pierce does it again. And they take a couple steps back and settle for three, but it's been all Cincinnati here in the early going. But Tulsa on the move now, starting to really get that offensive line going and that run game going a little bit. Well, it's the third drive in the Cincinnati territory, but still no points to show for it. Prince straight ahead on second and two. That'll move the chance. Holly? You guys, good news. Jarrell White, the leading tackler for the Cincinnati defense, was able to just run back out onto the field and will be able to continue. And it's important because James Wiggins, their leading safety, who is starting this game, is not able to continue. He had that issue in his leg. He cannot play the rest of this game. He's the star of that well-balanced defensive backfield. Prince on first down. Nowhere to go there. And it is White who just came back into the game with the tackle. Jamari Taylor. Slow to get up, back up, defensive tackle. Luke Fickle is fourth year at Cincinnati. Greg, what he has done here with this program, back-to-back 11-win -back seasons, and now sitting here trying to stay undefeated and win an American championship. Yeah, he's been outstanding. Has such a good feel for the area. Obviously so familiar with Ohio and has built an extremely consistent program. And on the heels of one of their best recruiting classes, this thing ain't going anywhere. This machine might just be getting started. Smith on second and 10, and that's incomplete. You mentioned that Fickle really knows the area and has been recruiting well, including in his own house. His wife, Amy, very proud this week, and Luke very proud this week because Landon Fickle, the big 6'5", 260-pound offensive lineman from Moeller High, has signed to play for the Bearcats. He's going to play for Dad. <laughs> sure, that, that was the one in-home visit that Luke Fickle was able to make. That's it. Uh, so that's, that's big, but exciting. I know they're so happy, the Fickle family, and I think that's a big reason. A lot of people have said, well, he's going to be connected to a lot of big-time jobs. In Luke Fickle's eyes and in his family's eyes, this is a big-time job. So he's very happy here in Cincinnati. A lot of movement on the left side of the line. An in-home recruiting visit that includes take out the trash now, son. Prior to the penalty, first charge timeout for Tulsa. So we're saying Tulsa and Philip Montgomery were able to use that timeout. Trailing 10 0. And you think about how much talent there is, both in this area and the state, and you can understand why Holly Fickle's having success. 
look at this. When he took over this job, just 11 scholarship players from Ohio. Well, that has changed. 45 currently on this roster. A lot of kids from right here in Cincinnati. And in this new recruiting class of 23 kids he signed this week, nine are from the area. Everywhere you look in the stadium, you can see this, this branding called Clifton Style. Clifton is this area here in Cincinnati, and he's trying to make it hip and cool to be part of the Clifton Style. I love that he is making it really cool to stay home for these Cincinnati and Ohio kids. A lot of talent in this state. A lot of energy in this program, a program that has had so much success through the years. I think Mark D'Antonio, Brian Kelly, and Butch Jones, and now what Luke Fickle is able to do. Off the timeout, here's your third and ten for Tulsa. Smith, plenty of time, but he throws it short of Sleep Stokes. So that Cincinnati defense does their job on third down. I know there's a wet ball, so it's difficult to throw. Right there, that had to have slipped out of Zach Smith's hands. Let's look, look at his right hand as he's getting ready to throw it. He secures it. But look, he kind of adjusts right at the top. A little bit of adjustment. You can't see it great from there. But he adjusts the hand just ever so slightly, so he's kind of questioning that grip he has. And as a result, he's been pretty inaccurate. Zach Long, 43-yard attempt. And Tulsa is on the board. 11 play drive, and we've got a 10-3 game. The American Athletic Championship presented by Capital One on ABC is brought to you by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. Such a great day of college football today. Of course, Clemson, the ACC champs, Texas A&M, number five in the latest rankings, defeated Tennessee today, 34-13. Jimbo Fisher said seven straight SEC wins. Some schools didn't even play seven games. I don't care what league you're in. If you're going to pick the best four, we're one of them. And then you look at this Cincinnati team at 8-0, trying to win a conference championship, trying to get to 9-0. Remember, AM got destroyed by Alabama and then went on the seven straight wins. The signature win was all the way back early in the season when they squeaked one out against Florida, who was then fourth in the country. And now Cincinnati trying to have a signature win here. Trey Tucker on the return. And Tucker catches a seam and dives out past the 30. Monday Night Football, Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers taking on the Bengals right down the hill here in Cincinnati, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN and coverage of course begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. You spent a year of your life here as a pro football player. I did. Not a great, I love this city. I really do. I love Skyline Chili and I love just all the many things, La Rosa's Pizza. I love Cincinnati. I think it's a great town. Jerome Ford. Stacked up, driven back. That was big Jackson player. Six foot, 290 pound guy. You think of that body type, and then you watch player play. And this is a guy who's very disruptive, very active. He is. Him and Tyree Stevenson both jump out when you watch him. This is an active front. And if you look at player, I mean, he, you could make a pretty strong argument that he single handedly single-handedly took over the Navy game and won it. I mean, he was that good that night. So they have an excellent front with a couple very capable guys. He was the conference defensive player of the week. Second and nine and incomplete, trying to connect with Michael Young, the grad transfer from Notre Dame. So far here, both quarterbacks just a little bit erratic. Zach Smith a little more so than Desmond Ritter. It's obvious that it's wet, the ball is wet. They're doing the best they can to make sure a dry ball stays in there, but the ball just a little bit loose coming off both quarterbacks' hands, and as a result, uncharacteristically inaccurate here so far in the first 20 minutes of this game. There's the quarterback comparison. Cincinnati, one of three on third down. A third and nine here, pressure. Ritter ball is out, and Tulsa has it. Laying right on the ground was Jackson player, and the ball was like a magnet to him.
It was Cullen Wick who forced it out. Yeah, he comes right around the right edge, and as Ritter stepping up, he has two hands on the football, but Wick grabs his right arm and pulls it just a little bit, just hard enough to get that ball dislodged. Excellent jump there, too, by Colin Wick. I mean, he timed that snap beautifully. And working against Darius Harper, the senior right tackle, he just gets right around the edge and dislodges the football, and then player right where he needed to be Hops on it, a huge play there from Tulsa's defense. First Cincinnati turnover. Tackle for loss for Tulsa, and now it puts them in prime position here. Take over at the 28-yard line. Taylor. As he gets down to the 24-yard line, tackled that time by Cook. What did we say earlier? They want to be down by double digits. It's where they feel comfortable. <laughs> it's amazing. Something about having your back against the wall brings out the best in this team. Taylor again, and that will move the chains. First down for Tulsa. They're running the ball pretty well. I mean, for the most part, this is an excellent defense that they're going against. But they now are up to 70 rushing yards, and Taylor is averaging over five and a half yards a carry. Told you, number one rush defense in the American is Cincinnati. And yet they are committed to the run. Smith quickly to the outside. And Hall with a spin move as he works his way inside the 15. Three yards there. And they're going to need to be able to run the football because so far the ball is just way off the mark for Zach Smith. Wet ball, and right here you can see it really slip out of his hands there as a duck comes quacking. And it happens. It's difficult to throw in these conditions. But they need the running game to take some pressure off their quarterback. Second and seven. Taylor trying to find something there. Holly. Well, we did ask Zach Smith, knowing that it would be wet this weekend, how he had prepared for this game. And he said, you know, we had a wet football almost all practice this week because they got a ton of snow in Tulsa. So he felt like he was prepared for this moment. You do see him put his hands in that muff and try to keep him dry in between plays. Third and three, and Taylor in for the score. From down 10 zip to an extra point away from tying up undefeated Cincinnati. So they cash in off the turnover. Colin Wick forced it out, player recovered it, and then a steady diet of Corey Taylor. Thing of beauty there from Tulsa on the ground. Starting to impose their will along the line of scrimmage. Tough, resilient Tulsa team. The fifth different date for this game this season alone. These two couldn't wait to get together. Tulsa couldn't wait to get their chance. They get it in this title game, and they're tied with number nine, Cincinnati. For every field goal and extra point made this season by participating universities, all state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, all state. 10 10 game here. Joe, Greg, and Holly in Cincinnati. The juju hat is on, Greg. I love it. Corey Taylor, look what he has already done. I love that the bill gets a little warped as the season goes along because guys put it on. It's just awesome. Just awesome, man. Love that guys get to celebrate, have some fun after they score. Montgomery on the return for the Bearcats. And it's a good one. Let's go back to that touchdown. Running the football is all about numbers and leverage. You have four defensive players on the left side of the center. Well, good news is you got four guys to block them. Next thing you know, it seals up beautifully. And Taylor's able to hit his head on the goal post. They know if they can get you to the safety, the third level, the running back's responsibility is to make him miss. Just beautifully executed there along the line of scrimmage for Tulsa's offensive line that led to the touchdown after the turnover from Desmond Ritter. We have 84 yards rushing against this top defense in the American. And now Dokes is struggling to find anything against that Tulsa front as they swarm to him. Anthony Goodlow and company 
getting to him. Right now momentum clearly on the side of the Tulsa team. Cincinnati was really dominating this game for the first 20 minutes. And really in the last five minutes, it's been all Tulsa. Desmond Ritter's got to calm his guys down. They need to make a play here after they got good field position on the kick return. And there was movement again. Ball start. Tulsa, four of their seven wins this season. They came back from double-digit deficits. Correction. Delay of game. Defense. Number 30 for disconcerting signals. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, you don't hear that often. Let's bring in our rules expert, John Perry. You don't hear it very frequently, but using sounds that are close to the cadence, uh, they'll go delay a game on defense. I've seen a lot more of it this year, JP, because there's not as many people in the stands. The officials <laughs> can actually hear what's going on on the field. So I've seen that four times now, and I don't think I'd ever seen it until this year. It's pretty amazing. Did you hear a lot of it back in the day when All you were playing? All the time. <laughs> it drove me crazy. <laughs> Second and five after the penalty. And Dokes just a couple of yards there. They are really fitting it up well against the run defensively. And as you see them drawing it up there, Trayvon Reeves, the senior linebacker, getting involved. Joseph Gillespie in this defense has 14 takeaways on the year. Did a great job against the run game of Navy as well. And they're leaning on that defensive front tonight. And this is a critical down and distance for Cincinnati. Keep this drive alive. And those safeties, look how tight that Tulsa defense is. The deepest guy on the defense is eight yards. Third and three. Pressure off the edge, and they get to him. Reeves comes charging in on Ritter. Trayvon Reeves with the sack on third down. Momentum Tulsa. Just a great job timing up the snap. If you look at the right side of the offensive line, Darius Harper's concerned with the guy that was initially lined up over him. When that guy slants inside, he's trying to pass it off to his guard, but Reeves has already passed him. That was an excellent disguise there and a nice timing on the blitz there for the Tulsa defense. James Smith on to punt. He does have 15 punts that have pinned inside the 20 this year. Flag comes in before the play. Second Tulsa sack moments ago. By rule, the clock will start on the snap. A great call defensively by Gillespie to send Reeves, wasn't it? It was, and he's he deserves an awful lot of credit this year. I mean, Gillespie, this team plays so hard. They're so sound. They don't give you anything for free. And he allows his players to do what they do well. For instance, Zayvon Collins. He's not, just because he's 260 doesn't mean he's going to line him up at the end of the line scrimmage to make him rush the pass. The guy's great in space, so he drops him out into coverage. He really understands the strengths and weaknesses of his players. I marvel at his ability to move Collins at 260 pounds. Fair catch at the 16 by Keelan Stokes. Just over six minutes to go till halftime. Tulsa tied up with Cincinnati. There is the D.C. Gillespie, whose team just came up with the sack. The super big Samsung QLED TV is made for football. Christmas list, and he's got one check mark there, a night away from my wall. Oh. That's a terrible check mark. Hang on. Right. So he's got yeah, the night. There we get go. On, he's got on TV. He's got one, now he's got to win the American Championship. Christmas list. Night away from the wife? Come on. Rainy night in Cincinnati. His team, undefeated Bearcats, right now are dealing with a Tulsa team that's playing some fiery ball. And they're running the ball well. To boot. Surprisingly enough, I mean, it's not often when you watch Cincinnati and they're not the more physical of the two teams. Right. So far, it's early on. There's a lot of game left to be played. Right now, Tulsa's winning at the line of scrimmage. And when you look at their running backs, they're falling forward as you see Marcus Freeman, the defensive coordinator for Cincinnati. Malik Van, second time that the trainers have been out to see him. We had a nice visit with Marcus Freeman yesterday. And we asked him about the layoff and what concerns him being a coordinator. 
And he says, you know, 28 days without playing a game, you almost have too much time to prep. He goes, I've gone back and watched about two years of Tulsa football on film. Right. And sometimes in talking to both him and Mike Denbrock, the offensive coordinator, said you can kind of have some paralysis by analysis. You almost have too much stuff. So they spent really the last 48 hours actually taking stuff out because they were <laughs> overanalyzing every possible angle of their plan. I don't think it's had a huge impact on their players. They've played fast, but right now, Tulsa's been the team that's certainly been more physical, and their championship games are often decided at the line of scrimmage, and right now they're the one that's winning it. Holly Freeman and Fickle make a good combination when it comes to defensive Wizards, don't they? You're absolutely right, Joe. They have known each other. Luke Fickle came to recruit Marcus Freeman when he was a 16-year-old in high school. He went on to play for him as a linebacker at Ohio State, and they have become best friends. Their families are close. Now they work together. And it's been a beautiful friendship. Marcus Freeman said, I feel like I have the opportunity of a lifetime right now, but he is a bright up-and-coming defensive coordinator that may have some bigger opportunities. He's very happy here and loves his head coach, Luke Fickle, who he's known since his sophomore year of high school. And now that team with a third and six. See what they do defensively. And get off the field is what they do as they brought pressure against Zach Smith with Jarrell White. Just a thing of beauty on the rush. You're going to see a guy loop inside and then come outside, just overwhelming the left side of that protection. You have four offensive linemen and four guys rushing the passer. That's a problem if you're Zach Smith. He has to ground it, and they're going to have to punt. That was an excellent call there by defensive coordinator Marcus Freeman. So Wilson with his heels on his own five-yard line, punting away to Montgomery. And this is going to be a scatter, but it does take a Tulsa bounce and a good one. All the way down to the 36-yard line. Time for today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Tulsa, 3,269 students, smallest enrollment of any FBS school. Who has the smallest enrollment among the Power Five conference teams? And you forget Tulsa is sitting there, a private, religiously affiliated school. Really neat campus, too. Really, really neat. I'm trying to think. I, I want to say, oh, my goodness. I'm so bad at these. I want to say either Miami or Northwestern. Oh, it's a struggle. Ritter was looking for that triple option. Had the initial run and then had LaBelle. All right, we're going to give you the answer here. Our Aflac trivia question. Obviously, you got to think private school, smaller school, Power Five conference, the smallest enrollment. Tulsa only 3,200. Wake oh, Forest is only 5,400 undergrads. Oh, I should have known that. I did a game there last year, and I feel like that was part of our conversation. Gosh, it makes me so mad. I'm so competitive on those, and I just really want, I know, I watch Get Up every morning, and Hembo always stumps everybody. Like, I want you guys not to stump me just once. Well, just you're on, one you're time on the this show, year. aren't you? You're on the show on Tuesdays? I am on Tuesdays, but they don't ask me those questions. They're impossible. <laughs> Ritter's going to run it here on second and 10. And he's taken down by Reeves. Remember, it was Reeves who had the sack moments ago on a big third down. Coming up on five minutes to go here in this half. And we got a tie ball game in the American Conference Championship. A lot of people were buzzing about the opportunity with Notre Dame getting blown away by Clemson. Could Cincinnati come out here and do something really special, put up a huge number that would boost them up in the college football playoff rankings? And they're having a fight right now with Tulsa, a very good Tulsa team, third and three. And they're going to have the first down here with Pierce. Pierce has had a heck of a first half. As he adds to it here, Pierce goes for 14 yards. He has three catches, Greg, for 90 yards. Yeah, and he's been excellent. He might get another chance here. This part of the field, fresh off a, a first down conversion. If I'm Cincinnati, play action pass, hard play action, take a shot. See if I have one-on-one, -on -one, maybe I get pass interference, but I'm going to get aggressive here, try to push the ball down the field. First down run 
by Dokes. And he spins free and makes the most of it. Well, we mentioned what happened in the ACC championship. And for those joining us now, Greg, you say if Alabama wins and they're up on Florida, and if Cincinnati wins here, you expect this to be the order tomorrow when it's revealed. I do. And I think for as good as Cincinnati is, I'm just not sure their resume is going to stack up against Notre Dame. And then, of course, if Tulsa wins, the conversation centers around not who gets in the playoffs, but what group of five team is represented in the New Year's Six. It's either Tulsa or Coastal Carolina, more than likely. Second and three. Ritter, plenty of time to the end zone. Touchdown, Pierce. He's over 100 yards and then has that score. 36-yard touchdown catch, Alec Pierce, as he gets past Allie Green. Well, beautiful route and a perfect call against quarters coverage. You look at Taylor, number 11, he grabs the safety. You got the post over the top. Desmond Ritter. Throws a strike to Pierce, who's had a huge first half. They've targeted Pierce four times. He has four catches, 126 yards, and that touchdown. Four plays over 30 yards. Turnovers and explosive plays are the biggest creators of momentum and therefore they are the biggest plays throughout the game and Alec Pierce responsible for several already each one more spectacular than the last and he's been excellent Tulsa's gonna have to find an answer because they do have very good corners outside on the perimeter but neither Green nor Evans have been able to contain big number 12 for Cincinnati so far tonight Ten zip. Tulsa came back, tied it up, and then Pierce did his thing. And that'll go out of bounds and bring out the penalty flag. Tulsa has elected to take the ball to the 35-yard line. First down. So Ritter, 149 yards passing, and Holly, that touchdown, he can spin it a little bit. Well, he can spin it for a good reason. He grew up in his grandmother Jan's house, and Jan is actually the one who took him out into the yard and taught him how to throw a spiral. She said, I've been watching football my whole life with my 92-year-old father who is watching tonight from Urbana, Ohio. And she said, I just feel like uh, the last finger on the ball has to be the index finger. And I followed up with Desmond. He said, Grandma caught me. That's how I throw it. And his spiral looks pretty good. How about Grandma with the X and O instruction for this quarterback at Cincinnati? She did a heck of a job. I mean, because the index finger is the last one to leave it. That ball just turns over beautifully. Well coached is Desmond Ritter. Corey Taylor. He's had a big first half himself. Flag is down. You know, Tulsa lost their star running back, Shamari Brook, to a torn ACL before the season opener. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 73. 15-yard penalty, the down counts, it's second down. That'll back him up. And Shamari was a 2,000-yard career guy, Greg, so it's been a little bit of a running back by committee situation for this offense. Yeah, and it's, it's obviously worked out very well. feel terrible for Shamari and, and hope he makes a, a quick and full recovery, but he was supposed to be their bell cow, and this team, like it has all year, they just continue to respond to adversity. You lose one of your best offensive weapons in his senior year. It's a gut punch for everybody. And they haven't done it with just one guy. They've obviously gone with the committee approach like you alluded to, and Prince and Taylor and, and Wilkerson, who's unavailable tonight. They've done an excellent job creating a three-headed monster there in the backfield for Tulsa. There's Wilkerson there. It's 
Second and 22 after the penalty, and that was nearly White's second interception of the game. Had a chance at it there. Man, he might have been out the gate, too, as the ball. Not just hard on quarterbacks. They've run this play a few times now. This little return route on the inside as they're trying to hit Johnson. And my goodness, White almost started running with the ball, obviously, on the back shoulder. It's a bad throw. Such a close play there for the linebacker. Third and 22. Zach Smith winds it up over the middle and has it to J.J. Josh Johnson. Flag is out back at the line of scrimmage. It was a free play after they jumped in the neutral zone. Offside, defense number 93. Five-yard penalty, repeat, third down. Remember, coming up at the half, we will hear from Kevin, Mark, and Booger for the Capital One halftime report. You know they're going to be sizing up everything when it comes to the big reveal tomorrow. How will things play? What will be the reaction to what happened with Notre Dame today? Texas A&M is trying to make their case based on what they did against Tennessee, and Cincinnati is hoping to break loose here. Third and 17 after the penalty. Four-man rush against Smith. Gets by Sanders. Sanders now trying to track him down again. And it's short and incomplete of Keelan Sleep Stokes. Great rush there by Sanders. And I remember doing the American Conference Championship game last year and watching that young man and thinking, whoo, boy, this guy's got NFL written all over him. He's long, he's athletic, he can time the snap count. I think he's probably one of the more underlooked players in the country. Find a guy with that kind of length and that kind of juice off the edge. It's a guy that's going to be playing, I think, for quite a while on Sundays if given the opportunity. Here's what else I like about him. You talk to the coaches of Cincinnati, they say hardest worker on the field in practice, and then it shows up in the games with productivity. Fair catch at the 30-yard line by Ryan Montgomery. Visit with Mike Oresco, the conference commissioner, yesterday. I know there was so much reaction when he said this week, bring back the BCS. <laughs> bring back those computers. It would be a fairer system than what I'm seeing right now. And I can remember back in 2009, I was fortunate enough to play for Alabama in the national championship. I remember had Texas lost to Nebraska, it would have been either Cincinnati or TCU that we would have played in the national championship game. So I understand where he's coming from. Ritter quickly gets it to Tucker. Ball is out, and it is recovered by Justin Wright. A wet football clearly having an effect tonight. And how about, that is now the second turnover by Cincinnati. And how about Christian Williams trying to turn it back inside, but putting that right arm out, number three to dislodge the football. Look, he overruns it a touch, but he brings him back inside and hits it right on the football as the ball ba breaks free. Just a beautiful job there by Christian Williams, the opportunistic nickelback here in this 3-3-5 defense. Just an excellent play. And now we're here is Tulsa, with just over two minutes to go before we get to Kevin Mark and Booger in the studio with a chance. Stokes trying to get to the corner, and he is upended by Derek Forrest. This is a big drive here. Not only can you potentially get a two for one, knowing you get the ball in the second half, but he sees momentum before halftime, and he can take advantage of quick change turnovers. Second and four, Taylor, and Taylor will have the first down. Flag comes in late. It's going to be a hands of the face defensively by number 93, Elijah Ponder. The hands got up there, and it is chippy on the field tonight for the AAC championship. You see right there.
Tyler Smith's helmet went flying. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Defense number 93. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. We'll tag Elijah will, Ponder with that. The clock will start on the snap. I'm telling you, if you just watch the trenches and watch the body language of the Tulsa offensive line and the body language of the defensive line for Cincinnati, there's the penalty. See the hands there up into the chin of Tyler Smith, the left tackle, and the helmet getting dislodged. But just look, there's a challenge that's being instituted every single snap by this Tulsa offensive line. I've seen a few different occasions, especially number 73, Dylan Couch, say, come on, come get it. Full backfield this time, as Taylor can't find much there. Just inside the 10. Clock running down, coming up on a minute and a half to go before the Capital One halftime report. Second and eight. Taylor again trying to split defenders, and another flag comes in from the defensive backfield. Cold, rainy night in Cincy. I think they're going to get center Gerard Wheeler here. Holding offense number 66. 10 yard penalty. Replay, second down. You're going to see Wheeler in the middle of the offensive line, the center, kind of grabs the defender with his left arm and kind of slams him to the ground, and the umpire sees it. Watch him right here. He's engaged. Look at that left arm right there. Looks like he slams the Blanco to the ground. The umpire all over it. I told you, man. The trenches are getting very feisty amongst the Bearcats and the members of this Tulsa offensive line. Look at the penalty numbers. Second and 18. Smith steps up, batted, and then falls to the ground. It was Darian Beavers with the pass defended there. And I'm watching the ball come out of Zach Smith's hand. It's just not coming out very clean. That's not a ridiculously difficult throw. You got to get it over that lower level defender, but he's just not able to layer it. Sometimes with a wet ball, you just have a difficult time finding that touch. So he's going to have to make sure that they get those balls nice and dry at halftime so he can get a little bit more efficient in the passing game. Cincinnati takes their first charge on out of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. Cincinnati with the timeout there. There can be so many things to talk about tomorrow, Greg, but chief among them are comparing teams once you get past really the big two, Alabama and Clemson. Um, listen, I, I saw your projections there. Obviously, Ohio State now 6-0, Ohio State now claiming a Big Ten championship. So the assumption is uh, Alabama wins tonight. They maintain number one. Clemson right. moves up to number two. Ohio State number three. Can say what you want against Notre Dame. Right. But they've got the signature win. They beat Clemson, yeah. right? So, yeah, they got the blowout loss. It look good. But they also have the signature win. They have ten wins. I mean, I, you can say, well, it's the same old Notre Dame. Look what happens if Trevor Lawrence came back. Yeah, they beat him. That's great. But Trevor Lawrence didn't play. Still won the game. Does the result matter? Are we now devaluing wins because of how they win? No. They won the game, and Notre Dame is a he's, they are very, very solid. And today was not a good look for them under any circumstance. But if they get that four spot, they absolutely deserve it. Third and 18 for Tulsa. Smith, a lot of pressure in the pocket, able to escape it, get rid of it, but it's incomplete and short of JJ Josh Johnson. That was a good job there by Smith. And I know it's an incompletion. Not all incompletions are created equally. Right here, you take a sack in wet weather. That makes that field goal that much more difficult. So him just being able to negotiate just enough time to get rid of it and not take the loss of yardage play was significant. The one byproduct of it is 
Cincinnati now has two timeouts with the ball coming back to them potentially. So had he taken the sack, they might have had to burn a timeout, but still love the throw away. Zach Long, 10 of 12 on the year, made a 43-yarder earlier. You talk about the weather conditions affecting you. Zach Long slipped on his plant foot. The field is soaked. And watch his plant foot here. It looks like the plant foot, Joe. Tell me if the left plant foot gets a little too close to the ball. I mean, it looks like, and if you look at it from behind, you look at that left plant foot, Joe, it looks like he gets so close to the ball that he tries to save it almost. No, his plant foot totally slides forward. His position was good. His jab step was fine. His drive step was fine. When he went to set his plant foot, it slid forward on him. It didn't fully come firm and grip the ground. And that is, listen, you got every aspect of the game is impacted by the weather, and that is a missed opportunity. So now 42 seconds and two timeouts to work with. And here is Ford. Ford had the 42-yard touchdown earlier. It has been soaking all night long, Greg. I mean, from before kickoff, it has been a steady rain. And it's been really difficult to be consistent in the passing game, at least for, for Tulsa. It looks like here, backed up in their own end. Thought Cincinnati might try, if they squeak to run, might try to get in a little bit of a two-minute operation. But knowing the wet ball conditions, probably smart to play it conservatively and take a seven-point lead into the half. That is exactly what they will do. Well, the weather playing a factor in terms of what we are seeing tonight. Cincinnati has led at the end of the half every game this season. Seventeen to ten is our score at the half. And stay tuned for the Capital One halftime report. Big day in the sport. They'll get you squared away with everything heading into the college football playoff rankings reveal after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Dr. Pepper Championship Week. The American Athletic Conference Championship on ABC presented by Capital One. Part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week as you're watching the American Conference on ESPN. 10 zip early on in Cincinnati. And then Tulsa started to find a way, getting some turnovers, finding some momentum with the run game, Greg McElroy. Right now it's a seven point margin as we get ready to start this second half. Also gets the ball to start this second half. Here's today's Pacific Life game summary. You mentioned it, Tess. It's been about big plays, and Al Pierce has delivered. How about this catch on the sideline, one-handed. And then for the touchdown a little later in the half on the post, just beautiful job of him taking advantage. But Tulsa's been really good on the ground. Corey Taylor's averaging over five yards a carry against one of the best defenses against the run in college football. And really, if you were to sum it up, it's all about how physical Tulsa got as the game went along. I know they went into halftime with a seven-point deficit, but they were right there. And I know Cincinnati had some adjustments they wanted to make there. And at halftime. Physicality matters in bad weather, and you're seeing it here, and you're seeing it with this guy too, Corey Taylor. Holly. Well, I actually asked Tulsa coach Philip Montgomery about Zach Smith's hand slipping on the ball. He said, we just have to do a better job getting a dry ball in there every single time. He said, I like how we're playing. We just got to eliminate penalties. Straight ahead, and another run for a first down from Corey Taylor. And Holly mentioned it, Zach Smith. It's pretty inaccurate. It's just six of 19, and a lot of those misses, they weren't really all that close. I mean, they were way off the mark, and it's difficult conditions. I mean, to expect him to be 75% passing is going to be a bit of a stretch, but he has to be more consistent, especially on the shorter underneath throws that are considered extended handoffs. 
First down pass here. And that diving effort at midfield is made by Sleep Stokes. Number three on their all-time all-purpose yardage list is Sleep Stokes. Yeah, did he go down and get that? It was really close. The ball just a tiniest bit low, but a pretty good throw there by Smith. Taylor, not much there at all as he's brought back by Joel DeBlanco. He's third on the team in tackles. Guy who spent three years as a special teamer and now got his opportunity this year in the middle of that defense. Well, he's been the signal caller. Him and Jarrell White do a great job. They have a very disruptive front. And that front got kind of pushed around there in the first half by their standards. I was so, so surprised by that. I certainly didn't expect it, at least not in the first half. No. Daneric Prince trying to turn that edge, but he was wrapped up by Javon Hicks. This is a critical down and distance here for Tulsa. The first drive of the second half. Got to try to make sure that those second half adjustments get pushed in. Right here, obvious passing down on third and long, and expect man coverage across the board from Cincinnati. Third down and seven. Cat blitz, and Smith then taken down right in the middle of that pocket. That was Curtis Brooks who brought him down. That was a great rush. You look at the top, that corner blitz. You see number 13, Ty Van Fossen, unable to get over the top. JC Santana had a chance for a big play, and Smith just didn't see that blitz come until the very end. So Wilson on to punt away. Wilson, who had a 75 yard punt in the SMU game this year, he sends this knuckler down the field, and Montgomery decides to field it. And gets a return out to the 19-yard line. On well, that resume for Cincinnati. American Conference. Listen, this is a tough conference. This is, you know, we talked about this a lot this week, of a conference filled with diverse offenses, yes. different looks, but quality, tough games week after week. Great athletes and really solid coaching. And those are the two biggest things that the American has. And like you said, Tess, how many different leagues are you seeing? Triple option one week, right. and then air raid the next. And then, a, you know, what you see from Tulsa, which is spread with a power run game. I mean, it's the diversity that you see in this league, really not just offensively, but defensively as well. Ball start. Offense number 55. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. And I'll, it's no secret that a lot of great coaches, of course, come from this league as you see the American standings. And it's unfortunate this year that the American didn't have ample opportunities to play against the Power Five because I think this league this year, the depth and the quality across the board is outstanding. It's just disappointing that they didn't have as many opportunities as they would like. First and 15 after the penalty. Ritter with time, shallow cross incomplete. We're going to connect to Pierce. And think of the way we knew UCF to be at the beginning of the year. We knew Memphis to be a high quality programs here. No doubt. And I'm going to see SMU rise up and right. Tulsa rise up. <laughs> right, and SMU had the injury bug, and, and UCF has been a little bit up and down by their standards, but it's a very good league, and everybody respects it. And this year, I just don't feel like the league's gotten the credit it likely deserves. Well, then when it comes to the college football playoff rankings, not getting the benefit of the doubt, as Commissioner Mike Oresco has stressed. Second and 15. And taken down that time is Ritter by Player. Jackson Player, he is extremely disruptive. High motor guy. And he gets after Ritter there. And I don't know if you could drop the first two plays defensively for Tulsa any better here in the second half of this football game. Cincinnati has another pre-snap penalty, backs him up, and then drop pass off the mark, and then a sack. It's been not very well executed from the Bearcats here in the early goings in the third quarter. 
Two of six on third down is Cincinnati tonight. Ritter on third and 15. Pressure again. Escapes it. Extends the play. And downfield he goes. And that is incomplete. Well defensed by Tulsa. Zavin Collins, the star linebacker, getting active against Ritter. One of the best in America there, sky, spying the quarterback. If there's one thing that we've learned this year is that Tulsa is a second half team. More specifically, they're a third quarter team. Of course, the first quarter did not go their way this, this game, but third quarter is when they've made their hay. 6'5", senior punter, Smith, the Aussie, the big boot here, and it takes a Cincinnati bounce, and then Stokes decides to field it, and he brings it out to set up good starting field position for Tulsa. Tulsa hunting down an upset and a championship. They're only down a score here in the third quarter against top 10 Cincinnati. of a stretch is that I can't wait man the big guys coming next week it really is the most wonderful time of the year oh it sure is and to spend it with you my dear friend that, that softens it a touch <laughs> ready for play <laughs> tomorrow we have the college football playoff selection show you know, I know obviously all the attention is going to be on the four, but I'm fascinated to see how these New Year's Six matchups roll out. And, of course, this game here is going to have a lot to say about that. Prince, big run. Daenerik Prince. And this Tulsa run game is having a night against the number one run defense in the conference. 38 yards for Prince there. Yeah, how about this? I mean, just working right here and then pulling up inside. This is a thing of beauty as they pass that off. <laughs> Look at just the hole that opens up. As now he makes it inside the 10-yard line. A gain of nine yards there. The transfer from Texas A&M. And Jarrell White is down again. And gets up under his own power. They'll bring him off the field. Their best linebacker. Remember, they're without their starting safety, James Wiggins, who was one of the 12 semifinalists for the Thorpe Award. And now White, who had an interception earlier tonight, is coming off the field. And this is just back to the long run. Just the way they pass that off. There between the tight end and the offensive line, Ethan Hall and... The right tackle, Muskrat, just doing a beautiful job of just passing it off and creating a huge opportunity in the run game. Second and one, why not? Flag is down. As Prince strutted his way in, and they'll walk it back. substitution, 12 men on defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. Touchdown, Tulsa. And Philip Montgomery is loving it. His team is believing here in Cincinnati. Well, with the way Cincinnati's running the football, this might be the next step defensively. They might need to put an extra defender on the field. But I maybe just hope that the officials don't catch it. But all joking aside, just a beautiful job there by Tulsa's offensive line. First time that Tulsa has played for the American Championship. They came here with a purpose. Cincinnati, top 10, undefeated. But Tulsa here to win it. Greg, why is this happening to the Cincinnati run defense? Well, they right now are getting pushed around. And when their defenders engage and initiate contact against these two running backs, both Daenerik Prince and Corey Taylor, 
both those two backs are running through contact. I mean, they're falling forward, and in some cases, they're just running right through the would-be tackler. So not a very good job of tackling so far from Cincinnati, and an excellent job by Tulsa, especially along the line of scrimmage, of pushing those Bearcats off the football. Eight-yard touchdown run by Daenerik Prince moments ago. Tie game here in the American Conference Championship game. There's Tucker on the return as he slithers his way out towards the 35-yard line. Then Eric Prince said, hey, Corey Taylor, I can do it too. Let me have some action. He breaks free along the left side and runs right through, lowering his head on the second run and then finding pay dirt on the third. Really nice start to the second half here for Daneric Prince in that Tulsa run game. The expectation is that a Cincinnati win here would obviously make an argument to try to vault up, but would most likely land them in the Peach Bowl. A lot of people saying against Georgia. But a Tulsa win here, Greg, we've got to start thinking about the domino effect of what a Tulsa win would do to the New Year's Six lineup. High game here in the third. Ritter incomplete. Coastal Carolina likely watching this game closely, my friend. I would imagine so. And Coastal Carolina, while I do think that the American is the best group of five conference, it's hard to argue with what Coastal Carolina has accomplished this year. They obviously beat Louisiana earlier in the year, and they took care of BYU in that last minute shuffle so they have a pretty impressive resume, and if, in fact, Cincinnati goes down tonight, I think they'd be the recipient of the bid. Ford on the swing pass, and Ford finds a seam and is out towards midfield with a Cincinnati first down. Of course, Tulsa would sit there and say, hold on a second now. What about this win against Cincinnati? What about this championship? But the group of five, the New Year's Six contenders, I mean, these are two programs that have had sensational seasons. No doubt about it. And, of course, the Sun Belt Championship being eliminated. Obviously, we know games being canceled have affected Cincinnati negatively. Will that affect Coastal Carolina negatively? Snap infraction. Offense number 56. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Holly? Well, guys, remember, Cincinnati had had a 28-day layoff. They haven't played since November 21st. And going into the locker room at halftime, Luke Fickle told me the procedure penalties, the false starts, are killing them. They're just not getting a rhythm on offense. They're not getting a push on the offensive line. And whatever's going wrong up front, this is like the fourth or fifth penalty they've had as a false start or a procedural penalty on offense. How are these teams have combined for 14 flags tonight? Ford tripped up. That was Justin Wright able to track him. If you look at it, I mean, you can see this is third time's a charm as we've tried to play this game a couple times. Now finally having the opportunity in the American Championship. But if you look at Cincinnati, at some point here, they had the big run early from Ford, but they need to get this run game going a little bit with the weather and the inconsistency throwing the football for both teams. It's going to be important for them to be balanced offensively because Ritter's missed four of his first five attempts in the second half. Trying to set up the screen. They do so to Montgomery. Well blocked out in front. Montgomery cuts back in and is down to the 25-yard line. Excuse me, that's Josh Wiley. That was the tight end Wiley there on the tight end screen. Yeah, and I love this. He's going to act right here, and the next thing you know, he's going to drift out and you're going to have plenty of space out in front. Look at him attract Zaven Collins on the end. Zaven Collins thinks that he beats the tight end in his pass rush. And next thing you know, he's got a bunch of guys out in front to take advantage of the pressure from Tulsa. So 27 yards from Wiley. Big, long strider there. And now Ritter. As he works his way down to the 10-yard line, and that'll move the chains again. He is smooth at 6'4", 215 pounds, 15 yards there. He's done a beautiful job with him here. He was really raw early in his career, but he has gotten more consistent. He's always been a great athlete. He's always been an incredible competitor. 
but he's gotten very consistent in the past game. It hasn't necessarily been on display tonight because of adverse conditions, but he's grown beautifully under Mike Denbrock's leadership at offensive coordinator. First and goal. Reaching out for the goal line, touchdown, Desmond Ritter. 10-yard touchdown run, Ritter. And his grandmother, Jan, we told you, she taught him how to throw a spiral years ago. Pretty good with the legs, too, Grandma. And Cincinnati retakes the lead. And the officials are going to take an official timeout. They may take a look to see as he reached out to the line if he had this or not. And does he cross the plane? Watch that knee. Knees down, where's the ball? From that angle, it's difficult. And also the ball comes loose too, but as it crossed the plane, obviously the knee was down at that point as well. Knee down, where's the ball? It's difficult for me to tell from that angle. I don't think there's enough based on the first two angles that we've seen to overturn the call on the field. John Perry, video evidence is always critical in making these decisions. Yeah, angle is everything unless they can potentially piece something together. Where is the ball in relationship to the right knee thigh area? So regardless of the angles being used, they could potentially piece it together. The question will be for them upstairs, is it enough to make the change? I think this will be a play that they, there's three terminology. It's overturned, it's confirmed, or if they just can't tell based on what they see, it stands. And based on the angles that I've seen, I think this call is going to stand, John. I don't know if you agree. Yeah, I like it as it stands. We'll see what that, what that announces. After further brings. review, the ruling on the field stands. It is a touchdown. And it is a touchdown. So Ritter, the 10-yard touchdown run. It was a really nice response drive by Cincinnati here. Very nice. Say, hey, look, we're going to take some of your medicine. You just ran it right down our throat, and we're going to give it right back to you. And Ritter being physical there, that sends a message to his team. The defense will respond to that. The offensive line will respond to that. And there were some great blocks on that touchdown that they are going to be celebrating there on that Bearcat sideline for quite a while. Well, he's been the big play wide receiver tonight, Alec Pierce. Watch him go down and crack on Zayvon Collins. And his quarterback on the pin and pull finds the corner pylon for the touchdown. And his grandma, who taught him how to throw it. I don't know if she taught him how to run it, but that was a heck of a play <laughs> by her grandson. American Athletic Conference Championship on ABC, presented by Capital One. It's part of the Dr. Pepper Championship Week. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. 24 to 17, undefeated Cincinnati on top of a very fired up Tulsa team tonight. Thought is, if college football playoff potential four stay the way they are, championship Cincinnati team, if they can hold on here, would land in the Peach potentially against Georgia. Of course, we will have that exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups. Rose Bowl, the All-State Sugar Bowl, that comes your way tomorrow. The final top 25 rankings, it starts at noon Eastern after Sunday NFL countdown on ESPN. We've been giving you our take all night long. I know what happened to Notre Dame tonight, but they also beat Clemson earlier this year. They're sitting there at 10-1. Everybody expects a four to be next to their name tomorrow, Greg. Yeah, that's the reward for losing in the conference championship game. You're probably going to have to play potentially Alabama in New Orleans. Prince couldn't find anything on the outside, not with Derek Forrest waiting on him. 
Well, you made the point earlier of how much the safeties, the defensive backs, they will play close to that line of scrimmage and get involved in stopping the run. We saw that there with Derek Forrest. And if I'm Cincinnati defensively and I'm their coordinator, Marcus Freeman, I'm, I'm just disregarding the pass to a certain extent. Like, Got I'm it, right? dare Zach Smith to throw it over my head. Offside, defense number 92. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Curtis Brooks is getting a little anxious. He had that sack earlier in the second half. Yeah, and it's been a couple times now when Bearcats have jumped into the neutral zone. But so far, Tulsa has run the ball with pretty good efficiency throughout the course of this game. But the one thing they haven't done is really do anything through the air, especially over the top. If I'm Cincinnati, I'm selling out against the run. I can't let this Tulsa run game beat me the way it has here in the first two and a half quarters. Full start. Offense number 73. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Jarrell White, the start linebacker for Cincinnati, has returned to the field for the Bearcats. There's Jarrell. That's 16 penalties in this game. Smith batted at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Sanders, my Jay Sanders, was able to get his arm up. Six foot five, very active edge rusher. And he got in that passing lane that Zach Smith was looking for. Yeah, it was a great job there by my Jay Sanders. As soon as he knew he wasn't going to be able to get home and he saw those hands come apart by Zach Smith, he throws up his arm and gets a piece of it to set up third and long. And here comes Tulsa now with that bunch formation that they've had success with. They've, they've run this look a couple times. They've run this on a little out route, and it's given them some looks. Let's see if they go to it again. So down, Smith to the outside, and he's going to have the first down with Crawford. Very nice there by Smith, stepping up in the pocket. Not an easy throw there, too. Drifting just a little bit to his left, but throwing a nice ball there on the sideline. That ball was in the air a long time. Prince waited for that block, got it from Tyler Smith. Remember the comebacks that this team has had this year. They trailed by 10 earlier tonight. They tied it at 10. They tied it at 17. Now down a touchdown here with just over five minutes to play in the third. And this team just absolutely refuses to quit. No matter what the circumstances are in the game, down huge against a great opponent, doesn't matter. They're going to keep fighting. Second and three. Smith gets it out to Stokes. Smith Stokes with a burst past midfield. It's another first down for Tulsa. Six yards there to Keelan Sleep Stokes. You like that nickname, Sleep? I do. I do too. Got it when he was in 10th grade. Started making plays. Coach said, we've been sleeping on you. Taken down by My J Sanders. Leads the team in sacks and brings down Zach Smith there for a loss of eight. Just a great job by My J Sanders. Starting up field and working inside there against the true freshman Muskrat, who's in for the injured Chris Paul. Went out earlier in the game. One of the best pass rushers in America right there, setting up the freshman, working inside and dropping his quarterback. An eye now on 21 again, my Jay Sanders. And timeout is going to be used by Tulsa. Tulsa takes their first charge, so I'm out of the half. This is the 32nd timeout. You know, I mentioned just moments ago, Greg, and when you think about the college football playoff, the next conversation becomes all right, so what are we left with with these New Year's Six bowl games? Thought is that a Cincinnati win here today would land them in the Peach Bowl. There could be some other intriguing matchups. I'll tell you right now, 
I love the way this Oklahoma team is playing. Yeah. This Oklahoma team that didn't have their full roster ready to go early this year when they suffered two stunning losses. But you watch the way they tore through the rest of the Big 12. That's the team that's going to end up in the Cotton Bowl. Could be an intriguing matchup. Florida's playing Alabama tough. Could be against Florida. Yeah, could be. And I'll tell you what, Oklahoma, it was as if something clicked during their bye week. It almost clicked during the Texas game, which was right before their bye week. And they obviously gutted out a victory there in pretty dramatic fashion in overtime, several overtimes at that. And they've been a different team ever since. Second and 18. Smith extending time, and it is picked off. He was looking for something, and instead he sees Beavers with the football and interception. Darian Beavers with the pickoff here. Just great eyes by Beavers. If you watch him the entire time, he's dropping into zone coverage. You're going to see him just drop back, but his eyes are always in the backfield the entire time. And as he sees the intended receiver, Corey Taylor, work out on a little leak route, he jumps right in front of it, times it beautifully, and intercepts the pass. Just a great job of taking advantage of that zone coverage, able to read where Zach Smith's at at all times and hop in front of the intended target. Great play defensively. And now Jerome Ford as Ritter will keep it. Pulls it from Ford's belt and glides for a first down. You celebrate a turnover this way here in Cincinnati. Oh, that was big time. Wow. That was solid. Beavers there. Vince Carter, our colleague, would be jealous of that one. He was in the air for a while. Opportunity for Cincinnati to stamp things here a bit. Ford on the carry. He's getting extended playing time as Doak suffered an ankle injury earlier. Zavin Collins with the tackle. Have not called Collins' name as much as we would have thought. An outstanding linebacker. Of course, he made big plays with interceptions this year. Had two of them that were game clinchers. Yeah, he's outstanding. and He hasn't been quiet. They've just been very cognizant of where he's at on the field at all be, times. Right? <laughs> If you don't, something's wrong. So obviously the receivers, when they've gone down and blocked, offensive line is working to him at all times. You cannot let 23 beat you. That's the storybook, obviously, on Tulsa's defense. Ritter on second and eight, setting up the screen. He does so to Ford, but right on top of it was Reeves. He's had a nice game tonight. Reminder, we got Sunday NFL countdown set to come your way. Complete coverage of Drew Brees' return to action. Comes your way at 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. That's all before the college football playoff selection show at noon. Right here, third down plus territory. I like this idea of getting an empty. Let's see what the defense is looking like. But I like the idea of a quarterback draw. And if they bring pressure, a quick throw, because I know I can potentially go for it on fourth down as well. Third and eight, quarterback draw it is, first down it is, and Ritter will move the chains. It'll be a first down at the 25-yard line for Cincinnati. Yeah, I love that there. Obvious passing situation, third and long. Hit him with a little quarterback draw and get your running back out in front too. So actually quarterback lead draw. <laughs> and who does he lead on? Zaven Collins, just really nicely done there. Excellent call by Mike Denbrock. And that way, even to be short, you get a chance to go for it on fourth downs. So just taking advantage of where you're at on the field and the situation in the game. Ritter with 60 yards rushing, leading rusher tonight. Montgomery with the carry here. Holly. Well, guys, Desmond Ritter has shown to be very effective with his legs, but he didn't start out the season so great at quarterback. A little bit of a slow start. Here's how it started. This is a very popular internet meme. And I love how it's going for him. Look at the five games, 11 rushing turn, uh, touchdowns. He has been terrific with his legs. We've seen him extend plays here in the last two series. And I love that he finally relaxed. He started trusting the pieces around him a little bit more and not pressing. It's going pretty good for him right now. 
Last five games are superb. Second and six. Shallow cross. Jordan Jones. So that'll be a first down for the Bearcats. Just getting some news in right now that is official. It's been rumored in recent days that the Rose Bowl, the famed Rose Bowl, is going to move to Arlington, Texas. It will not be played in Pasadena on New Year's Day. The college football playoff will be played now in the Rose Bowl in Arlington, Texas. We'll have more on that after the break. And how about that? Denied the exemption for fans and family to attend. So the Rose Bowl's on the move. End of three here in Cincinnati. College football playoff will take place in the Sugar in New Orleans and then in Arlington, Texas. Moving out of the Rose Bowl with the concerns, the COVID concerns and the local government regulations there in Pasadena. Folks, it's happened before. History has a way of repeating itself. There were great concerns and government prohibiting large gatherings back in 1942 after the attack of Pearl Harbor. And the 1942 Rose Bowl was played at Duke. It's played in Durham, North Carolina. Anytime you go down to Duke, you do a basketball or football game down there, you see the placards, site of the 1942 Rose Bowl. Oregon State beat Duke 20 to 16 in the 28th edition of the Rose Bowl back in 1942 with great concerns of a potential attack on the west coast of the United States back then on New Year's Day. And now the Rose Bowl moves to Arlington, Texas because of COVID. Remember there was the request that was made for an exemption so that families could come and see the game. Brian Kelly of Notre Dame said, I don't know that we would play in the college football playoff if families aren't allowed to see our kids play. Well, now the game's been moved. I think it's the right move, too. I mean, to create that playoff environment and obviously with sensitivity to what's going on in the city of Los Angeles. We were there last week, did a game in the Rose Bowl, actually, and you know, for the players and other families to be able to go. So I think it's the right move if they feel like that's what's in the best interest of the teams. Third down and seven. Cincinnati looking to extend their lead. Ritter inside the five. And that is complete to Michael Young, short of the line to gain. It was third and seven. He gets five yards there on that catch. And they'll look at it. Did he get underneath it? Yes, he did. That right hand secures it. Set up a fourth and short. And right now, Cincinnati's offense on the field with heavy personnel. Four tight ends in the game for the Bearcats. And Jerome Ford is the back. Fourth down and two. Ford breaking free, trying to get to the edge, and he slips down. Great penetration by the Tulsa defensive front. Ford was looking for anything, but on fourth down, he loses three yards. A turnover on downs here in the fourth quarter. Tulsa stops them. Still just a touchdown margin. In the most unusual college football season ever, we'd like to thank all of the kids who have been playing through everything, whether it's social injustice, COVID, closed campuses, distance learning, positive tests, Rescheduled games, postponed opportunities, but finally the joy, the opportunity to play, to be with their brothers. We love you, and we wanted to say thank you to everyone who has made this college football season possible. It's been tough, but my goodness, they have battled through. Has it ever been tough? And now two tough teams battling to the end here. Taylor. Testing that right side. He's taken down by Brooks. 12 and a half minutes to play. Cincinnati coming in 8-0, but having not played in a month. Retreating 
in the college football playoff rankings by not playing. Everybody coming to the defense saying, wait a minute, this is an elite team. They passed the eye test. This Tulsa team, though, came in tonight, and they have fought them hard, Greg. They certainly have. And back to what Holly was saying, I, I truly mean this. This has been a really crazy season, but it's been a rewarding season to see how much these guys love football. Second and eight. Smith with a man blowing him up as he throws it downfield. It's incomplete. He knew it was coming. It came, and he stood there and fired it downfield. It was a good blitz there, too, by Dublanco. He almost got there. I mean, Smith right here. Man, hanging in there. Not able to get much into it, but that hurts. You're so exposed. As those hands come apart, your midsection's wide open, which is a huge hit target for DeBlanco. A big third down here for Tulsa. Now remember, Smith's been dealing with a rib injury for the past few games. Coach Monty said he's such a tough kid. He is immobile, but he does a really good job of buying time and just simply being tough. Third down and eight. They come with a blitz again, and he's thrown down by Sanders. That is not a safety. Obviously, he was thrown into the end zone. But my J Sanders, my oh my, my J. This is the exact same pressure they got home with just a little while ago. They bring the pressure on the outside, which occupies the attention of the running back, Corey Taylor. And my J Sanders just loops right around on a perfectly delayed and layered pressure. A difficult spot here for Tulsa. Backed up, only 12 yards between the snapper and punter. 14 is the norm. Wilson, though, without a rush, gets it off, trying to set up the return for Montgomery. Oh, and he flips the field. Montgomery retreats all the way to the 43-yard line before he dances his way for a great return. And because of what Sanders was able to do and then the return of Montgomery, Cincinnati's going to be in prime position. They will start this drive at the Tulsa 30-yard line. Just a huge return there. And if I'm Cincinnati offensively, I, I kind of smell blood in the water a little bit. Great return. Defense just made a great play. I'm taking a shot. I'm going to try to find my best matchup, and I want to take a shot downfield, see if I can take advantage of this field position with first and 10 on the plus 33. Ford off the pitch, and Ford unable to find anything. Good pursuit down the line. Zaven Collins finished it up. Zaven Collins, who came in with 11 and a half tackles for loss, four sacks, four interceptions, and two pick six touchdowns. He's amazing and is so instinctive. And part of the reason why he's so good is he's played. A few different positions he used to play quarterback and of course grew up playing every sport so he is a very good athlete that has great feel for the game Ritter quarterback run Holly well, Zayvon Collin played all of those sports because he lived in a tiny town Hominy Oklahoma he's from the country he often goes hunting um, he said, you know, before the game, I listened to a little Johnny Cash to keep me calm, get me in the mood, but I ramp it up as we get closer to game time. And he had a little poo shiesty, you know, blood in back. And uh, he said, you know, I'm all over the place. I'm a valedictorian of my high school. I've had the opportunity to do a lot of different things in my life. And he is a well-rounded, complete athlete. Also a gymnast when he was young, and you can see that agility when he makes a move. Yeah, he told us, listen, I'm all about competition. And you see it with him. Third and three. And they're going to have the first down here with Bruno LaBelle. The senior who missed a few weeks with a knee injury. He's really their hammer, their blocking tight end, but gets involved with a 14-yarder there. And he's not exclusively a blocker. I mean, he can catch the football. Now, is he the better option between Wiley and Taylor and himself in the passing game? No, he'd be three out of three with those three guys, but he is capable of contributing. And right there, he does a nice job. He's actually third in the progression right there. Keep working on the shallow cross and find some open space. First down at the 12. Ritter inside the 10. 
tracked down by Goodlow. Ritter knows he had that one guy to beat, and he might have found the end zone yet again. That was a heck of a pursuit there by Goodlow. Initially, he crashed, which indicated to Ritter that he could pull it and get around the edge, but a good recovery by the defensive end who tracked him down for a short game. Cincinnati trying to win their first American Conference championship. They were in this game a year ago. Second and six, and the flags come in again. That has been the constant Prior theme with the free snap. snap stuff. Full start. Offense number 11. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. College football playoff selection show tomorrow. There's been such outrage over Cincinnati retreating in the rankings in recent weeks as they didn't play over the course of the last month. We'll see what a championship does for them tonight in terms of the number that's next to their name. Win this game, and there's a New Year's Six invitation. Most field be the Peach Bowl against Georgia. Commissioner Mike Oresco, he has been quite upset, said the CFP selection committee has to do some soul searching, that they're undermining their credibility. Snap from center. Off there, and Ritter just has to fall on it. Well, Ritter wasn't expecting it. There, miscommunication between him and his excellent freshman center, Jake Renfro. Election show comes your way at noon Eastern. Renfro, the true freshman center, came in five games ago against SMU for the injured starter, Jakari Robinson, and he's been in there ever since. So now third and 18 after that. Don't need to get too greedy. If you're Ritter, if you find a match if you like, take a chance, but don't get too aggressive. It was underneath with the screen to Ford, and Ford is taken down. It was Zaven Collins the first to get in there, and then Goodlow cleaned it up, but Collins read it right away. A great job. Look how quickly Zaven Collins recognizes the screen. He goes up, and then he, of course, beats Dylan O'Quinn, the left guard to drop forward in right around the line of scrimmage. That's good recognition and understanding of tendencies on third and long. A lot of teams go to the screen. That time, Zayvon Collins fully prepared to make it mean nothing. 37-yard attempt by Cole Smith to try to push the lead to 10. Snap was high. They did get it down, but they got a piece of it. So getting up and blocking it is that Tulsa front. They are fighting for every bit of it. Look at all those Tulsa players getting right up in the face of Cole Smith. The American Athletic Championship on ABC is presented by Capital One, What's in Your Wallet, and in part by Pacific Life, more than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. So many strong teams through the years as American champions, those great UCF teams last year. Memphis, they were so strong defeating this Cincinnati bunch. And now here's Cincinnati, but it's still just a touchdown margin after the blocked kick moments ago. That was a heck of a play by Jackson Player, the big defensive tackle who's barely scraping six foot tall to penetrate and get up and block that field goal attempt. Quick strike from Smith as he goes to JJ, Josh Johnson. Now he's got that juju hat on. You celebrate over there, Jackson Player. Yeah, he has been off the charts good. I mean, he killed a fourth down right here on the Wildcat, just penetrates and stops forward before he can even really get going. And then right here, blocking that field goal. The last two Cincinnati drives died as a result of Jackson Player. Smith comes to the near side and connects with J.C. Santana. Well, you said it to me a few days ago. You said, man, I'm watching film of Tulsa. I'm telling you right now, this kid Jackson Player, he can go. I really like him. I like Tyra Stevenson up front. They got a couple guys in the trenches, man. They're a handful, and Cincinnati's found out tonight 
It is tough sledding against that Tulsa defensive front. Here's a third and one. And they're going to have the first down thanks to Corey Taylor. Corey Taylor goes ahead for two yards there. Corey Taylor led at 100 yards tonight. 21 carries for 100 yards and a touchdown run. The finishers, that's what Tulsa has been. They get off to slow starts. They got down by 10 earlier tonight, but they have finished all year long. Can they do it against undefeated top 10 Cincinnati? trying to earn their way into the New Year Six, trying to claim a conference championship. Smith, with time, launches it downfield into double coverage, and it is caught! It was a fight for the ball, and Sam Crawford ends up with it. And now Tulsa's on the go with a 54-yard explosive to Crawford. Wow. It looked like Hicks was going to intercept it, and he gets both hands on the football, and then sure enough, Gardner's there as well, and it somehow finds its way into the hands of Crawford. Taylor first down run, just a couple yards there. I mean, this should have been right in the hands of Hicks. It goes off his gloves into Crawford. Just amazing. <laughs> Just how this Tulsa team is, man. They just never give up. I mean, that ball might be intercepted or something, but no, he somehow secures it. Amazing. And now, how big was that blocked field goal moments ago? Tulsa with a chance to tie here with four minutes to play against the number nine team in the country. Smith. With a man in his face to the end zone. Incomplete. He was looking for J.J. It was DeBlanco who got in on Smith again. He leveled him moments ago, but Smith, a tough guy, has been dealing with a rim injury for the past month, but hanging in there. He's tough as nails, man. If you know he's had a long night just by looking at his jersey. I mean, That's is, right. He has absorbed some hits throughout the course of this game, and he's battling, man. Got to respect the effort he's putting forth. Third and eight. Receivers two by two. Watch All year long they have fought. And coverage, and they're going to call timeout. Two they've been. Down by double Mark digits and roaring Tulsa. back. Can Take Coach Monty's squad side do side it side here, side. trying to tie the game when we return? Time out on the field. Cincinnati as we look at today's Pacific Life game summary. I'll tell you what, man, it has been a battle in the trenches. And if you look at Cincinnati, had opportunities to put this thing on ice, but Tulsa refusing to go away. Desmond Ritter's been excellent. It's really started to use his legs here in the second half. But it's Cincinnati's defense now with their back against the wall. We're going to get to Tulsa offense. They had a big play just a moment ago. Third down and eight, under four minutes to play, trailing by a touchdown. Smith steps up in the pocket to the end zone, he goes, it is caught. Touchdown, J.C. Santana. We're an extra point away from being tied in the American Conference Championship game. 13-yard strike, Smith to Santana. And a beautiful throw from Smith. Moved in the pocket a little bit, just a little bit moving up. And throwing a strike to Santana, working in one-on-one -on -one coverage against Kobe Bryant. Strong hands from Santana. And just an excellent drive from Tulsa right down the field to put this game away. An extra point away from being all tied up. Now remember, this extra point. Zach Long slipped on his plant foot earlier tonight and missed a field goal. Rainy conditions. Nothing's a guarantee. But he drills this straight through, and we're tied up with 3.41 to go. That guy, a big part of the success. Jackson player, blocked a field goal moments ago. 
Tulsa came right down the field. Zach Smith to Santana. We are tied with a title on the line, folks. Twenty-four, twenty-four, three forty-one to play. Cincinnati undefeated since he hasn't been tied or trailing this late in the fourth quarter all season long. Tucker on the return. And Tucker is taken down near the thirty-yard line. Live Moss moments brought to you by Taco Bell, and that moment just happened, right? And it was. One heck of a catch there after the bobble. Didn't know who was going to get it, but it was Sam Crawford that fought off two Bearcat defenders to set his team up in the red zone. Just an amazing effort there from the wide receiver. Incredible concentration and providing some much needed life to that Tulsa passing game. And now Desmond Ritter with Ryan Montgomery in the backfield. Dokes, the starting running back, has been dealing with an ankle, so we haven't seen him since that injury. Quickly to the outside is Jackson, and Jackson tried to maintain his balance before he is forced out. In this situation in the game, you're not quite in two-minute operation yet. You have your entire offense, of course, when you're the quarterback in this scenario, you've got to know how many timeouts and what do we need. Obviously, a field goal is all you need, so you don't have to get too aggressive. Just stay methodical and stay within yourself offensively. Goal start. Offense number 55. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. 18th penalty of the game combined. Remember, they hadn't played in a month. This was one of the things that concerned Luke Fickle. A reminder that Monday Night Football coming your way from right here in Cincinnati. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Steelers, Bengals. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern. Eight full start penalties tonight. Ritter on second and nine. Three-man rush, lofts it downfield, and incomplete as he had Jackson. The third down and nine. American Athletic Conference championship game. Glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore, Greg McElroy, Holly Rowe. Tulsa Golden Hurricane team. Started the season with that close game against Oklahoma State. They lost, and they tore through what was available to them in the American. Cincinnati, who has won 19 straight home games. Top 10 team. Many feel being snubbed in recent weeks with the college football playoff rankings. Being pushed here to the limit. Third and nine, and it is complete downfield to a first down to Alec Pierce. Alec Pierce has had a huge night tonight. Yeah, 146 yards receiving, Greg. Yeah, and beautifully done, too, by Ritter. You see the free safety there kind of cut that crossing route, which allowed Pierce one-on-one -on, -one on the over route right behind it. Just an excellent catch there by Pierce on the ball thrown slightly behind. Third and long, they got 20 yards. Quick swing to Ford. And Ford with the blockers in front, including Jay Sean Jackson. will take it ahead for eight yards. Clock counting down to two minutes to play. Undefeated Cincinnati trying to win a championship here at home on a cold, rainy night. Ritter gets it quickly out. 
That'll be a first down as he goes to Tyler Scott, freshman receiver. Remember the exclusive reveal, the college football playoff matchups, the New Year's six games, everything you need to know, the four-hour special. It's noon Eastern tomorrow. Greg, you're going to be working in the studio all day tomorrow. Can't wait to hear everybody's opinion. Or will Cincinnati land if they can win this game? What happens to Tulsa if they get a signature win like this? So much still to be decided. Ritter. First down run as he just gets to the 29-yard line and took a hard hit as he reached the sideline there. There's big Zavin Collins coming in with Evans. Yeah, it's been a good job so far. By Mike Denbrock, the Cincinnati offensive coordinator, mixing it up. Short passes, be mindful of the down and distance. Sometimes you're so worried about the clock, you're not thinking about the down and distance. And at this point here, as they now are kind of knocking on the door of field goal range, expect Tulsa here, maybe in a play or two, to start to ramp up the heat, start thinking maybe some pressure, see if you can't knock them out of field goal range with a sack. And timeout is going to be used by Cincinnati. I don't think this is quite the game everybody thought it was going to be, huh? This Tulsa <laughs> team came to give a little something to Cincinnati tonight. I think we've all learned a lot about Tulsa, and it's kind of what we thought we knew, but their physicality and, and the way they just muddy up the game to make it difficult on opponents is remarkable. The ability to run the ball early on really set the tone, didn't it? And then a few key plays, a really Jackson player. I, I go back to that field goal attempt. When Cincinnati was going to go up by 10 here in the fourth quarter, and there he is. I mean, this is a stocky, tough interior defensive lineman who penetrated on a field goal, got his hand up, and made the block. That was a huge play to put them in position. Yeah, it was massive to give them a chance. And, of course, they go right down and tie the ball game. And Cincinnati trying to answer here against what's been a very stingy Tulsa defense all night long. See how he's got that decal, that American Championship decal just ripped off his jersey right there. That's a D tackle, folks. Second down and six. Cincinnati trying to get in a better position here. And that is off the mark and a bit dangerous for a moment as Evans was closing on it. Third down and six now. Nothing's a guarantee with these weather conditions. It has been pouring rain all night long. Saw a place kicker who slipped on his plant foot earlier. Third down and six. Right here, obviously, right there on the fringe of field goal range. Love to obviously get a little closer, but you don't have to throw it if you don't want to. But if you do, I highly recommend looking in the direction of the guy that's been your go-to guy all night long, Alec Pierce, number 12. He's at the bottom of your screen. Third and six. Ritter is going to run it himself. And it'll be fourth down and about two there as Ray made the tackle. Holly. Well, guys, keep in mind, Cincinnati's kicker has been out with COVID protocols. He missed about 14 days recently. Luke Fickle told us he's developed a little bit of a pull since he's returned. He hasn't been super confident in him. We already saw one kick block, so that's just a little context if they have to go for a game-winning field goal here. Yeah, to that point, Holly, he said, listen, he's not even doing kickoffs tonight. We just want to keep him fresh for the opportunity for the field goals, and now he will have the biggest opportunity of all, 63 seconds left in a championship game, trying to give his team the lead. And knowing, too, if your kicker has a bit of a tendency to pull the football, as a right-footed kicker being on the right hash makes an awful lot of sense. That way, he can aim at the near upright and draw it right between them. So I think that might have played a factor, too, on that third down call by Mike Denbrock. player who has made a couple big plays tonight fighting hard up front for Tulsa he'll be the one to watch obviously a guy with four career blocked kicks he's the one to watch though in the surge officials are concerned about a timing issue they just want to verify that they have everything correct 
First time that Tulsa's ever played in the American Conference Championship game. And they've made it a good one, haven't they? All time they've been in five conference championship games. Two and two in Conference USA title games. And that opening season, season opener loss. And then the sixth straight. And now fourth and two. And Ritter out there on the field with Ford. Expect a hard count if you can potentially get them to draw. Oh, and there was movement, and it was player. And he's going to take a shot downfield to the end zone. You saw player jumping in. Offside. See coach Philip Montgomery disappointed right there. As soon as you saw them go to the line of scrimmage, you had to think it was going to be some semblance of a hard count. See if you can't get a free play, free first down. Just a great job there by Cincinnati. Staying in there, picking up the first down without even really having to snap it. I want to remind you to stay tuned for the live trophy presentation here on ABC. Penalty gives him a first down at the 19-yard line. Jerome Ford. Can he get to the edge? Trying to turn the corner. Ball is out. And Cincinnati jumps on it. Michael Young was there. Hey, Got to remind your backs, too. Don't even think about getting close to that sideline. I mean, great collision here. Right here. Very close. And as a result, clock stopped right now. And it could be winding. Don't you dare go near the sideline if you're running the football and you're Cincinnati. Second and six. Forward again. Don't worry about the sideline. He's just going to snail crawl forward. Have that clock bleed down. You know, we have said it all day long. We've really said it all week long as we've gotten ready to call this championship game. And I stress championship game. So much of the conversation, so much of everything this week in college football, really in the sport for a while now, is about the college football playoff, the four. And we lose track of what happens. We lose track of how much championships matter. Playing for something matters. So even though you can sit back and say, hey, Cincinnati's been done wrong. Cincinnati didn't play. There were COVID issues. And all of a sudden, they see themselves retreating in the college football playoff rankings. Winning this game, winning this league matters greatly. That's their ultimate goal. And talking to Desmond Ritter earlier this week, we asked him, well, what do you think about the playoff? He said, I'm, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, what do you think about playing in the championship game? Hey, that's when his eyes lit up because this is the game that every single player across college football, they circle. Winning your conference championship is your first goal always. And being able to do that on your home field potentially for Cincinnati has got to be a remarkable feeling after a fantastic year. Twenty seconds remaining, third down and five. As Ford will be taken down by Jackson Player. Offside penalty moments ago extended things, allowed Cincinnati to get a little more yardage, to take more clock and to set up the potential game winner. Just a little surprised that they decided to run the ball there after the timeout. They could have attempted the field goal with a little less time. And if, in fact, 
the ball is bobbled or the snap isn't good, the holder could jump on it. So you attempt the game-winning field goal on third down as opposed to fourth down to give you a little bit more margin for error, but opting not to do that, calling their final timeout with three seconds left for a chance to take home the American Athletic Conference Championship. That holder will be the starting punter, James Smith. That snapper will be Kaysen Pfeiffer. And it'll be Cole Smith kicking, trying to win a championship for his undefeated team. This field goal unit, practice after practice, all year long, these three guys, snapper, holder, kicker, they think about moments like this. What did we say earlier? Forget the playoffs. Championships matter. Look at the intensity, some turning away as Cole Smith tries to win it for the Bearcats. And he does. Game winner, Cole Smith. Cincinnati wins the American Athletic Conference Championship. A 34-yard field goal for Cole Smith, caps it. It's also made it a thriller, didn't they? He tied the game twice in the second half. But unable to ever take the lead against this undefeated team. Great show in the American tonight. Luke Fickle, think about what he's done with this program. He had concerns about his kicker coming off COVID protocols. Having a muscle issue. They didn't have him kick off tonight. But he got it done when it mattered most. Game winner, Cole Smith. And a reaction from his teammates. Teammates that can call themselves champions right now. The Bearcats 9-0. Back-to-back 11-win -back seasons. And in this pandemic-impacted season, when they didn't play for a month, they had to shake off the rust and had a team in Tulsa that came out with physicality and said, we're going to punch you right in the face and take you right down to the wire. Let's go down to Holly. Coach Fickle, you had some concerns about your kicker coming off COVID, all that goes into this season. What went through your mind when he put that through the upright for a championship? Well, what went through my head was we should have done it earlier, but um, I'm just so proud. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on him. He's done a great job. We haven't kicked a lot of field goals this year, uh, but he kicked them when it really counted. The joy was palpable. You running around, hugging your kids. How hard has this championship season been? I, this, we, we're exhausted. I mean, this has just been as everybody's gone through an incredible up and down season emotionally draining in all ways our guys are so incredible what, what they've with, with, withstood and, and, and handled um, from everything being canceled at the beginning of the season to, to, to being able to do this right now uh, we couldn't do anything without these seniors they've been through the ups and the downs they've been through a four win season and this is what pays off when you, when you keep believing and keep fighting an undefeated Cincinnati team what opportunity has this group earned for the postseason. I, I hope they understand that this is a very good football team that plays in all three phases of the game. Um, you find a way to win, and, and I don't know how they're going to be denied. I mean, our quarterback and the way he played, and we didn't play great probably early defensively, but we found a way to change things up and, and be successful. Uh, so proud of these guys. Thank you so Thank much, you. Coach Fickle. Thank you. We've got that quarterback here. Heard Coach Fickle say this is a very good team. I don't know how they can be denied. Greg, the feeling is, is that they're heading to the Peach Bowl. 
but they are champions and they are undefeated. Holly. Desmond, I see you fighting off the tears. How hard was this for you tonight to bring a championship to this city? Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, we put in a lot of work, you know, in the off season and everything goes. Um, man, it's just been a long time coming. It was hard for you out there tonight. You had to show great toughness and grit. How were you able to do it in these terrible conditions? Uh, just keep pushing through. Uh, make sure everything, everyone's good. Uh, you know, we have a couple, uh, not a couple, a lot, a lot of mistakes that happened tonight. Um, but our, our way to adversity and to fight through, uh, that's what I love about this team. I know you've gone through adversity in your life. Your grandma's been there by your side. She's in the stands tonight, braving these conditions. What do you have to say to your family? Oh, my family. Uh, thank you for all the support me and all the time through everything in life. That's all I gotta say. Thank you, Desmond. You're a champion tonight. Thank you. You don't think championships matter? You think it's only the college football playoff? Matters greatly to that young man. So emotional, crying with joy, reflecting on the path he has taken. Coach Fickle told us, listen, he came in, he was a freshman running scout team. You would see that competitive nature. He struggled last year. He said the struggle made him better, it made him grow, and he realizes that now. And then there was Cole Smith, who capped the night with the game-winning field goal. Holly. Cole, you've been battling some some problems coming into this game tonight. Coach said that you were really doing your best. What was going through your mind as you had to run out onto the field to try to win the game for your team? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, we've practiced, I mean, I've taken hundreds, thousands of reps this season. I just had a rough week this week as well, a little groin pull, and uh, I've just been grinding in our team. I mean, we just came out here, we couldn't have done any better. And I gotta give thanks to the guys up front, the team for putting me in the position, and the holder and snapper. The team, is, the rain is pouring down on you guys right now. How concerned were you about the conditions to get that game winner? I wasn't really worried. Coach Mason makes us go outside when it's raining. We went outside a few times this week, came down to Nippert or outside on the half field, and we put some water on the ball, or we just went out on the cold to prepare. All right. What do you say to the college football playoff committee sitting there watching your team play tonight? What does this group deserve? It just shows that we can we fight no matter what, uh, weather no matter what, and we're just going to come out and work hard. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll have plenty to remember after tonight, plenty to celebrate, and we've got a championship to hand out. Coach Hurricane and their coach, Philip Montgomery, on a great season. And let's give them a hand. And now, I not only want to congratulate the Cincinnati Bearcats and their great coach, Their great, their great coach, Luke Fickle, but this team deserves to be in the playoff. And now, I would like Coach Fickle to come and accept the championship trophy of the American Athletic Conference. Congratulations. Signed his letter of intent, big offensive lineman. Been a busy week in the Fickle household. His daughter Luca just celebrated her 16th birthday this week as well. And now dad's a champ. How about that? Obviously, on behalf of all of us, Thank you to everybody that endured and came out tonight. 5,831. We love every one of you. And to these young men behind me, I, I don't know how you could have done it any better, any better this entire year. The season of sacrifice, the year of the teammate. I love you, we love you. Seniors, thank you. 20 in a row in Nippert Stadium.
and one of the greatest seasons in UC football history. God bless you. A 9-0 football team, a championship football team. They will find out their fate for the postseason tomorrow. It was a thriller, folks. A 34-yard game-winning field goal by Cole Smith gives Cincinnati the American Athletic Conference Championship. Enjoy the rest of your night.